Hello, my name is Anton Vucinko and I'm going to present a new small land low-cost ground robot for nuclear decommissioning, which name is Vega, but firstly a small introduction into the problem. Ionizing radiation is extremely dangerous for human life and yet, in most cases, people have to deal with it directly. There are many problems connected to radioactive hazards to deal with in the near future. Uh, the making consequences of catastrophes like one in Chernobyl or Fukushima, checking the condition of nuclear waste shelters, repanations of the radioactive environment, nuclear decommissioning, etc. It is extremely valuable to know the exact radioactive situation when dealing with such tasks because in many cases it allows specialists to know when it is deadly for them to engage, when radiation levels start to rise rapidly or even to eliminate the radioactive materials remotely. For such purposes, mobile robotic platforms were developed. However, those in most cases are extremely expensive, the application is limited and or they can be only one time used due to contamination and impossibility for disactivation uh, or high sensitivity of onboard electronics. On the side, you can see two available platforms. From the left, VOILS, which is a novel and model approach for addressing inspection tasks uh, at hard to reach areas. From the right, TEPCO survey runner robot, used for leakage inspections. For these robotic platforms, there is a specific set of tasks to perform, such as gener generating radiation maps of facilities, identifying materials within an environment, and when necessary, collecting small samples and taking swaps for subsequent laboratory analysis. These activities help gain a better understanding of the conditions and materials within an environment, aiding in the development of the commissioning plans. But there is also a set of problems related to currently available platforms, for instance that usually those platforms are deployed into hard-to-reach extremely defended places like underground nuclear waste shelters or pipe systems somewhere in nuclear power plant. In other words, into places where there are concrete walls and noise, those remote connection can be limited. In such situations, sometimes the connection can be lost and such robots uh, can get stuck somewhere and block the path to other robots in the future or even break uh, the important system like during inspection of the coolant pipe system. Available solutions are quite costly and depending on the materials used and design implemented can be lost after first usage. The thing is uh, that the surface of parts can be textured like wheels, which will facilitate the absorption of radioactive particles. And different materials can survive different amount of radiation, thus it is highly wise to make the right selection for platform parts. Here you can see a newly developed uh, platform which names Vega. The total mass of Vega in this configuration is 5.5 kilograms. Both 3D and 2D SLAM are provided by the onboard LIDAR and 3D camera. Using relatively standard techniques such as uh, AirTab map, G-mapping and cartographer. The 3D SLAM system has been tested successfully at AWE and was able to provide 5 cm accuracy over a trajectory of 150 meters in a cluttered indoor environment. A first-person view stream is also provided to allow the operation of the robot. Vega is also capable of fully autonomous exploration. But what exactly makes this platform suitable for a specified objective? One of the main requirements is to sustain operation condition of the platform subjected to very high doses of radiation for a long time without being disabled. Individual component testing has uh, been conducted on the components that make up Vega to determine their tolerance to total ionizing dose, which is going to be like TID. The experiments show that Vega is capable of operating in relatively high dosage environments for long periods without becoming disabled. However, to be able to operate effectively for sustained periods of time in relatively high dose rate environments, it may be necessary for the robot to be tolerant to TID of tens of uh, kilogray and therefore other designs need to be considered. There are many ways to make robots more resistant to radiation, like using of radiation hardened components like in space robots, or to use special shielding to protect the sensitive electronic components with a high density material with thickness of parts of up to several centimeters, which is not cheap in terms of both money and payload. With Vega, the goal was to eliminate as much of the robot's electronic systems as possible. Relay electronics, for example, were introduced and DC motors, which didn't require encoders, were utilized. This allows Vega to, in theory, be deployed into high dose rate environments, though with reduced functionality. For, for example, wireless communications uh, wouldn't be possible. Also, a 12 volt sealed lead acid battery was used because of its robustness and the technology's ability to function without regulatory electronics. The radiation tolerance of the materials used in Vega's construction is another factor that has yet to be considered. For example, extreme caution will be required when choosing the polymer coating for the wires and ensuring that 
Polytetrafluorethylene is not present in any of the equipment, as it is extremely sensitive to gamma radiation. This will be taken into account in future work. Vekas' target payload was a radiation-hardened camera probe with its own tether system, so there was no need for additional sensory equipment. In general, Vega meets all requirements and can be already deployed, also further developments are expected, which potentially will increase uh, tactic characteristics of the platform.